Hello, welcome back to chapter 13, Risk and Capital Budgeting, the expected value. One of the first questions that we usually ask about a probability distribution is where it is located on the continuum of possible outcomes. We measure this with the expected value. Expected value is the sum of the probability times the outcomes. In that equation, rho t is the probability of the t's outcome, and st is the t's possible outcome, and the expected value tells us where the center of mass of the distribution is located. For the normal distribution, the expected value is the same as this more formula arithmetic mean. Measures of dispersion. In addition to the expected value of the distribution, we also wanted to know how spread out the possible outcomes are. The more spread out the values are, the less certain we are of what the actual outcome will be. We typically measure the spread of the distribution using the variance of more commonly the standard deviation. The coefficient of variation is a standard deviation divided by the expected value. We typically use the standard deviation because it tells us how far on average the values deviate from the expected value and it's measured in original unit. If we are comparing two or more distributions that have different expected values, then the coefficient of variation should be used. Using Excel to measure expected return on the risk. For situations where all possibilities are equal, we can use some built-in Excel functions. The average function to measure the expected value or mean of the distribution. var.s or var.t calculate the variance of the distribution. stdev.s or stdev.p calculate the standard deviation. Frequently, though, some outcomes are more likely than others and the other functions do not account for the differing possibilities. For those situations, we must use every functions or regular formulas to do the calculations. Sometimes we can use the sum product function. Additionally, the Fermin NCS at in has the following functions that will use the probabilities. Sensitivity analysis. In sensitivity analysis, we change each uncertain variable one at a time and examine the effect that it has on the decision variable. For example, NPV. We do this primarily so that we can identify which of the uncertain variables are most important. Those that we have the biggest impact on that present value. The most important variables will then be used in the scenario analysis. Data tables, data tab to what if analysis and the data table are especially helpful for sensitivity analysis. The images at the right show the data table diagonal box and several data tables showing the NPV when each variable changes by some amount. Scenario analysis. 
The sensitivity analysis has identified the three most important variables, but we have only seen their impact on the net present value in isolation. Our scenario analysis will allow us to see the combined effect of changing all of these variables simultaneously. The image at the right shows the output from the scenario manager, data type, what if analysis, and a scenarios manager. And also the calculation of expected NPV, variance of the NPV, standard deviation of the NPV, and the probability that the NPV will turn out to be negative. Chapter 14, Portfolio Statistics and Diversification. Portfolio Expected Return. We would like to purchase the optimal portfolio. That is one that gives us highest return for the amount of risk that we can tolerate. In order to find this portfolio, we need to calculate the expected return and a standard deviation of a portfolio. The expected return of a portfolio of any numbers of securities is a weighted average of the expected returns of each of the securities in the portfolio. where the WT is the weight of the security T and the E, RT is its expected return. Standard deviation of a two security portfolio. The standard deviation of a portfolio is more complicated than the expected return because we need to account for the correlation or covariance between the securities. Correlation describes how strongly the return of two assets tend to move together through time. And we can measure this with the correlation coefficient, R. Once we have the correlation or covariance, we can now calculate the standard deviation of a two security portfolio with weights W1 and W2. All other things being equal, the lower the correlation or covariance, the lower the risk of the portfolio. The efficient frontier. We can calculate an infinite number of portfolios from any universe of securities. And, come, and some will be better than others. The collection of all possible portfolios is called the feasible, uh, feasible set. The portfolio is said to be efficient if it has the highest expected return of all portfolios with a given level of risk if we trace out the set of efficient portfolios, we can call it the efficient frontier. The image at right shows the Facebook set and the efficient frontier. Note that portfolios B and C are efficient because they have the highest return for their levels of risk. Nobody would invest in portfolio A because he could do better in B or C. The capital asset pricing model. The security market line, SML, is derived by equating the slope of the CML capital market line and the efficient frontier at the market portfolio because they are the same at that point. The resulting equation is known as 
the capital asset pricing model or CAPM. The expected return of the part of the stock portfolio is S equal to risk free rate times beta times the expected return on market minus risk free rate. Note that beta is an index of market risk, where delta measures total risk. The difference between them is the company's specific risk, which gets diversified away. The KPN essentially says that investors get a reward for two things. Delaying consumption, this is the risk-free rate. Taking uh, market risk, the risk premium earned for market risk, which is beta times expected return on market minus risk-free rate. Note that we do not get a reward for taking on company specific risk because that can be diversified away. <laughs>